In the vast expanse of the Old West, where rugged landscapes and lawlessness defined the frontier, one figure emerged from the shadows with a story as mysterious as the land itself. Born as Josiah Horner on September 15, 1849 in Harrison Township, Henry County, Indiana, Frank M. Canton's early years were marked by a journey that led him from the life of a cowboy to the notorious world of outlaws. As a teenager, Frank, then known as Josiah Horner, ventured into the world of cowboys, honing his skills and developing a strong work ethic during his time in Texas. His propensity for mischief, however, hinted at a more complex character beneath the surface. Little did the frontier townsfolk know that this young cowboy would soon become entangled in a web of crime and redemption. During the turbulent years from 1871 to 1878, Josiah Horner found himself on the wrong side of the law, engaging in various illegal activities that made him a fugitive from justice. In 1877, he faced incarceration for robbing a Comanche Texas bank. Despite being jailed, Josiah managed to escape and embarked on a journey that would shape his destiny. On October 10, 1874, a pivotal moment occurred when Josiah Horner clashed with Buffalo soldiers in a heated gunfight. One soldier lost his life, while another was left wounded, marking a major turning point in Josiah's young life. After escaping custody and returning to cattle herding, Josiah, now adopting the alias Frank M. Canton, drove a cattle herd to Oglala, Nebraska. It was here that he made a solemn vow to uphold law and order, turning away from a life of crime to embrace justice. The name Frank Canton would soon become synonymous with the enigmatic lawman who emerged from the shadows of a turbulent past. In the heart of Wyoming, where the vast plains echoed with a tumultuous clash between cattlemen, homesteaders, and rustlers, Frank Canton's journey continued, transforming him from a cowboy with a checkered past to a trusted enforcer of the law in the frontier town of Johnson County. His years as a sheriff and stock detective would become a chapter in the unfolding saga of the Old West. Embracing the role of a stock detective, Frank Canton found employment with the Wyoming Stock Growers Association, or WSGA, a powerful group of cattlemen navigating the shifting dynamics of a changing frontier. The escalating tension between wealthy cattlemen, rustlers, and the influx of homesteaders challenged the traditional free-ranging lifestyle of the ranchers, altering the balance of power and politics in the region. Elected Sheriff of Johnson County in 1885, Canton became the strong right hand of the cattle barons, entrusted with maintaining order and protecting the interests of the WSGA. His reputation as a no-nonsense enforcer of the law garnered attention, even earning him the top enforcer position within the association. However, Canton's tenure as sheriff was not without controversy. A letter from the Pinkerton Agency, recommending Tom Horn to Canton, revealed a hardline stance against wrestlers. Rumors circulated that Canton, once a fugitive himself, had become more of a paid assassin and intimidator than a dedicated detective. The turning point came when the foreman of a major ranch suspiciously escaped Canton's custody. The incident raised doubts about Canton's commitment to justice, leading to whispers of corruption and collusion with the wealthy ranchers. The homesteading faction, legally occupying land but encroaching on the cattlemen's free range, began to view Canton with a suspicion and disdain. The distrust reached a boiling point when a law-abiding homesteader, armed with evidence against Canton's associates in a previous murder case, was shot dead under mysterious circumstances. Many saw it as a cover-up, and a mob formed, demanding justice. Canton was arrested, but the influential ranchers stood surety for him, and he was released with the charges dropped. Fleeing the state and leaving behind a cloud of speculation, Canton's path led him to Illinois. The once respected sheriff and stock detective 
had become a figure shrouded in mystery, his legacy tarnished by those aforementioned accusations of corruption. Soon thereafter, the name Frank Canton once again became synonymous with controversy, and no chapter exemplifies this more than his involvement in the infamous Johnson County War of the 1890s. Canton's role in this violent episode sheds light on the murky intersections of power, lawlessness, and justice in the frontier. Returning to Johnson County as a local guide for Frank Walcott's hired guns, Canton found himself embroiled in a tumultuous conflict that would stain the history of Wyoming. Tasked with executing a death list of alleged wrestlers, a list Canton himself had drawn up, he led a group known as the Regulators, largely composed of Texan hirelings. On April 9, 1892, Canton and the Regulators descended upon the KC Ranch, where their primary targets, Nate Champion and Nick Ray, were believed to be hiding. Champion, a witness against some of Canton's friends in a murder case, and Ray faced a deadly confrontation. In the ensuing gun battle, Ray fell victim to the opening shots, and Champion valiantly fought back, taking down at least four of the regulators and wounding others, all on his own. As the violence escalated, Canton, with the ominous resolve, set the house on fire at 5 o'clock p.m. Champion, undeterred, burst out of the inferno, unleashing a barrage of gunfire with his Winchester rifle. But in a grim turn of events, Champion succumbed to a hail of bullets, being shot an astonishing 28 times. The brutality of the encounter left an indelible mark on the landscape of the Johnson County War. Two days later, a massive posse led by Sheriff Angus surrounded the regulators at the TA Ranch. And just as surrender seemed inevitable, the timely arrival of the U.S. Cavalry rescued Canton and his companions from captivity. The newspapers, influenced by powerful ranching interests, portrayed the regulators favorably, allowing Canton and his comrades to escape legal repercussions. Yet, the shadows of the Johnson County War lingered. Canton, along with the other regulators, had blood on his hands, and the unlawful hanging of James Averell and the legendary cattle Kate further stained his reputation. The incident became a turning point for Canton, marking his final departure from Wyoming, severing the ties with the turbulent frontier he had once navigated with such ambiguity. Frank Canton's involvement with the Johnson County War stands as a testament to the complexity of justice and power in the Old West. His legacy, intertwined with violence, manipulation, and the influence of ranching interests, echoes through the corridors of history, revealing the darker shades of the frontier's pursuit of law and order. As the sun dipped below the horizon, casting long shadows over the frontier, Canton embarked on a new chapter in this tumultuous journey, this time as a lawman in the vast expanses of what would become present-day Oklahoma. In 1894, Canton made a permanent move to the Oklahoma Territory, where he served as an undersheriff in Pawnee County and as a deputy U.S. Marshal under Judge Isaac Parker. His instrumental role in subduing notorious outlaw gangs further established his legacy as a lawman, unafraid to confront the challenges of the wild frontier. With his newfound deputy U.S. Marshal badge and setting up shop out of Fort Smith, Arkansas, Ken found himself patrolling the Indian Territory alongside renowned lawmen such as Heck Thomas, Chris Madsen, Bass Reeves, and Bill Tillman. Their mission? To bring justice to the untamed lands where lawlessness often prevailed. One notable event in Canton's Oklahoma lawman tenure occurred in 1895, when he joined a posse in pursuit of Bill and John Shelley. The outlaws had escaped from the Pawnee Jail and barricaded themselves in a cabin across the Arkansas River. In a dramatic showdown that lasted for five hours and witnessed more than 800 shots fired, Canton, displaying tactical brilliance, sent a burning wagon into the cabin. The outlaws, facing imminent danger, surrendered, marking another victory for justice in the Indian Territory. Another notable incident involves his role as a U.S. Deputy Marshal under Hanging Judge Parker. Canton was part of a posse that pursued and captured 
the notorious outlaw Bill Doolin in 1896. Doolin was a member of the Wild Bunch Gang and had been involved in numerous robberies and shootouts. The posse, led by Deputy U.S. Marshal Heck Thomas and including Canton, successfully tracked down Doolin in Eureka Springs, Arkansas. On November 6, 1896, in Pawnee, Oklahoma, Canton found himself in a deadly street confrontation with Bill Dunn. According to Canton's account, Dunn, harboring animosity, declared, Damn you, Canton, I've got it in for you, before reaching for his pistol. In an astonishing display of quick-draw shooting, Canton drew and fired, hitting Dunn in the head and killing him instantly. The local law enforcement, Canton's peers, deemed it an act of self-defense, making it one of the few real-life instances resembling the fast-draw duels often depicted in Hollywood Western films. His tenure in Oklahoma, marked by encounters with outlaws, fast-draw shootouts, and collaborations with legendary figures, added another layer to the enigma that was Frank Canton. The outlaw turned detective's final years unfolded against a backdrop of gold rushes, law enforcement, and the toll that time takes on even the most formidable figures. In 1897, Frank Canton, seeking new horizons, ventured to Alaska to join the Klondike Gold Rush. However, the allure of gold was fleeting, and he returned to the States after a two-year adventure. The transition from the Gold Rush trails to the familiar grounds of Oklahoma marked a pivotal moment in Canton's life. His career in law enforcement persisted, as he once again donned the badge of a deputy U.S. Marshal. The next decade saw him serving the state in various capacities, until 1907, when Governor Charles N. Haskell appointed him Adjutant General of the Oklahoma National Guard. This role became a significant chapter in Canton's later years, as he worked up to build the organization. Amidst his duties, Canton faced scrutiny for alleged misuse of public funds during his time as Deputy U.S. Marshal, clouding his later years with yet another controversy. In 1925, the toll of time became evident. Bald, with impaired vision, light sensitivity, and almost complete hearing loss, Canton found himself unable to continue his roles as a cattleman or as a lawman. Unemployed and visibly aged, Canton received a small pension from the Texas Cattlemen's Association. His unmarried daughter, Ruby, played a crucial role in supporting him, and Annie, his wife, moved into Ruby's home. On September 1st, 1927, unable to rise from his bed, Canton's health took a turn for the worse. Summoning a doctor, Ruby received the devastating news, terminal cancer with only a few days left. Despite his ailing health, the family gathered on September 15th to celebrate Frank Canton's 78th birthday at Ruby's home. The man who had once roamed the lawless frontiers of the West was now confined to his final days. And on September 27, 1927, surrounded by family, Frank Canton breathed his last breath in Edmond, Oklahoma. The funeral of this frontier legend became a major event in Oklahoma City, with Canton laid to rest at Fairlawn Cemetery in dress uniform adorned with Masonic rites and military honors. The echoes of Frank Canton's adventurous life and complex legacy resonated through the pages of history, marking the end of a chapter in the ever-evolving tale of the Old West. <laughs>